Welcome to creating a simple wall cabinet using VCAR Pro. First thing we're going to start with, we're going to be using a ShopBot Desktop Max to create the, these two sides for a standard 30 inch wall cabinet. Uh, the uh, cutting area for a Desktop Max is 36 by 24. Enter that information and 0.7 is the thickness of the plywood we're using. XY datum position is the lower left hand corner. Units are in inches and standard modeling resolution. Now keep in mind your material thickness will depend on what type of plywood that you have. You'll have to use your calipers to determine the thickness and the thickness you should use is the thickest measurement that you get for the thickness. Now we're going to start with creating the basic uh, cabinet and we're going to start with the lower left hand corner as our anchor point. And the width is going to be 30 inches, and the height is going to be 11.25. These are going to be face frame uh, wall cabinets uh, with a using would they be, have a soffit? Instead of being a 30 inch cabinet, we're going to create these. And I'll start by creating. Close that. And one thing uh, that I like to do with the VCAR Pro is you don't need to you be using a lot of these create vectors and and different uh, rectangles and things like that. You want to be able to use, start with one rectangle and then you're going to copy, paste, and resize. And that is the fastest way to uh, get some cabinets designed and you'll see how quickly this goes. So I like to use the shortcut key control C and then the paste control V because it's faster than using the mouse. Once we'll do a control C to copy and control V to paste, we'll pay, do it two times. One, two, Times. Now we're going to go over to transform objects and we're going to set selected object size. Now we're going to start with it doesn't matter which size it's already over on this side we can start here and the width is going to be we're going to add one hundredth to the thickest portion of the plywood. So the plywood is 7.2 in the thickness it would be 7.3 here is 0 0.70 so was the thickest part we're going to be 0.71 Make sure that your is not linked, so that's unchecked, and we'll click apply. And then we're going to click on the rectangle again, those vectors, and you see that there's a black and red overlay. Uh, when you click over here, you see that it's just dotted right over here. That means there's no lines on top of each other. Here there is a line on top of a line. Now sometimes that's a bad thing. In this case, it is a good thing, and we're going to go see. So I'm going to move over here to the lower left hand corner for the anchor point. I want the same width, 0.71, click apply, and those are going to be the two locations for our shelf dados. And we're going to click over here one more time. We're going to control C to copy, control V to paste, and this one we're going to go back in and we're going to set object size, lower left hand corner. And the, the width is going to be, this time, it's going to be 30, but the height is going to be 0.25. We're going to be using a, a quarter inch plywood backing with the rabbit. Now, this could be your different type of backs for cabinet designs. You can uh, play with this, and this is just a simple uh, quarter inch backing, and then we're putting a blocking right here for, for screwing it to the wall. But uh, right now, we have it in position. And now we're going to move these uh, uh, to the position that we want. So right here, we're going to type of move is not absolute; it's relative. We're going to, that's the easiest way because uh, we're just going to move it from where its current position is to a location that we know that the standard cabinet would be. Now most quarter inch plywood now is uh, 0.2 inches, so we want to move it back in Y minus 0.05. 05 right there and moves it slightly back there you'll see that and that is to make sure that that plywood is flush so it's f to f to fit back in there so that's going to be flush when we uh, when that's after that's rabbited it'll be flush with the back of the cabinet we'll close this now these most uh, face frame cabinets these are usually a half inch in on both sides. 
And so we're going to go to move again. And this one, we move to the right. It's going to be positive. Apply. Look over here on the other side. We move to the left. It's going to be negative. We're going to move a half inch. Negative 0.5. And so that means when the face frame covers it, there's going to be a little quarter inch uh, uh, gap right a quarter inch on the top where the face frame goes down, and then it's going to be flush on the bottom there. It's usually a standard cabinets are set up that way. So now we have positions for the dados and the wrap cut, and also a position for the cutout. The last thing we need to do is we need to create the shelf pin hole. Now, instead of trying to get measurement, position them in every place we want, I like to do it nice and easy. And, and we're going to go to draw a circle. And we're going to, uh, the radius is quarter inch. Now, you can get different uh, size shelf pins. We're going to happen to use quarter inch for this. It doesn't matter where I place this. It doesn't matter because we're going to align it right now. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to hold my shift key down and I'm going to go over here, my align objects. And I want that to be right at the top where it is. And then I want to move it over to the outside of that rectangle over here. So I'm going to deselect by clicking in the white space, click on my shelf pinhole, click on the top shelf here. And then I'm going to move it right over here. And you see where it's located. Okay. Now I'm going to move that out. Usually it's about six inches off the side there. And so I'm going to go back here to transform objects. I'm going to move select an object. I'm going to move X, X, usually where it starts on shelf pins. And I'm going to click apply. It moves over there. And then I want to do Control C to copy and Control V to paste. And then I want to click on that again and hold the shift key on right over here. And I'm going to move that to the outside of that box, the outside of that rectangle right there. Now, most uh, shelf pin hole or shelf pins are inch and a half from the side, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go here. The Y position will be 1.5. I'm going to move it. Apply. Over here, it's going to be, make sure I select it. There's pink, and it's going to be negative 1.5. There we go. What was this? And then I'm going to press F to fit. Now I want those two to be linked together, so I'm going to G to group. That groups everything. Now, uh, we have approximately six inches off of here. We're going we're gonna to come here, so I'm going to take my measuring tape. I'm going to go from here up to the bottom, and we've got uh, about 21 inches. And so I'm going to subtract six from 21. Gonna give me 15, and I'm going to call up my Windows calculator here, and I'm going to 15 divided by and usually the shelf pin spacing is 1.25 equals, and we need approximately 12 total. So what I'm going to do here first, I'm going to select that. Remember, I've grouped them. I'm going to go over to here where uh, we have an <clears throat> offset and layout. I'm going to go with this tool right here. It says Create Linear Array of Copies. And it's just showing me the selected size and location. And I want to do, remember, uh, I want to do 12 columns going across one row because they're grouped. The Y is not inconsequential because that's what, what I'm going to be doing. It's the gap X 1.25 that I'm concerned about. That's what I have. So you'll enter. 12 for your columns, and X, 1.25. And now I'm going to copy those right there. Now, you just make sure that they're centered, because I can see this is a little bit closer here, this farther than, and this is closer here. So I'm going to hold the Shift key down, 
and then select both of those and then I'm going to group them by pressing the G key. I'll close this. So then I'm click anywhere in the white space and then to center, if you remember the first tutorial, we're going to select what we want to center first and then where we want to center second. But before I do that, I need to press the G key to group or else it's all going to compress into a few circles. So right there, I've got them grouped. I'm going to hit the shift key here and select this. And then I'm going to go over here where it says align objects. It says center horizontally. And I'm going to click. And they're perfectly centered. So right now we have the top shelf, bottom shelf, the back, and the shelf pin holes. So all we need to do now is we can do a mirror image and we're ready to cut those out. But before we do that, especially since we're going to be using this on a full sheet of plywood eventually, and that will be for a future tutorial, it's important to group like operations. So the shelf pin holes will be drilled with a certain operation. So I'm going to group all those, grab all those with selecting, right click, I'm going to move to layer, and I'm going to put new layer, and I'm going to put shelf pin holes and we want to give it a unique color and we'll do that right here click OK now I'm going to hold my shift key I don't even do that because they're already grouped I'm going to click my two top and bottom shelves right click I'm going to put move to layer and put new layer and this is going to be wall cabinet shelves and we're going to give it a unique color and then we go down to the bottom, and this is where we're going to wrap it, the, the back panel. And we're going to right click, move to layer, new layer, and we're going to put this wall cabinet rabbit for the back. If I use spell correctly here, back, there we go. Give it a unique color. Click OK. F to fit. And the last thing we're going to do, this is our current layer. So all we have to do is click on here, and we just have to rename this layer. And we're going to put wall cabinet cut out. Enter. So there we have it. So if I click on all these little light bulbs right here, the wall cap, you see I've got the outline right there. And then as I add each one, you'll see how they all come in and with different colors. So I'm going to close this. And now we're going to do a mirror image. We want to create a mirrored copy. Click that check mark right there, and we're going to click this on top. And we're going to move this up. Now that we have everything assigned to specific layers, I'm going to go back and address one issue. Right here, we have uh, these two uh, shelf potatoes. We're going to ungroup those, U to ungroup. And then I'm going to hold the shift key down on both of those. And I'm going to go up here to set object size. And we're going to only be concerned about uh, the bottom staying uh, planted and anchored there. We already are going to be rabbiting out this end piece right here. And uh, we need to have this dado in a little bit farther, or else we're going to have uh, a little bit of wood left over at the end because of the shape of the bit uh, that we'd have to cut out with a chisel or a utility knife. So we only need to go really past the radius of the, the the bit, which is 0.125, we'll go 0.2. So right here, I'm going to go height. I'm going to 11.45 and click apply. And I could have done this earlier and should have done it earlier. 
And now we've got that. This is not going to be a problem here. Go down to this one though. And we want to extend this out on both sides. So 0.2 plus 0.2 is 0.4. We'll go 30.4. But this time we're going to put it in the center because we want to go equally on both sides. We'll click this. And that's perfect. So once that is done, now when we do our cutting files, there will be no uh, nothing that we'll have to trim on the plywood. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to select all the lines, and we're going to make a mirror image, and we're going to make sure we create a mirror copy. We're going to click on the top, and notice right there, we've got to make sure that we have enough room for that router bit to go around. So I'm going to use my keyboard and use the arrow on my keyboard just to extend it past a little bit there. Then I'm going to select all the vectors right here. Drawing a line around them, box around them. I'm going down where select object center and materials. Okay, and right there, I've got enough room on all the sides to cut out the pieces plus room in, in the middle uh, as well. So now it's, it's set up completely. Now we need to save this file. We should have probably saved it earlier. I'm going to save it under wall tab 30. Click save. And then we're going to be using this same file later on. For now, we'll go ahead and, and close this and then we'll be ready to start our next tutorial.